Well, let's get started. It's uh, 3.20. Um, welcome to the, uh, the afternoon session, uh, Why is my volume in air state? Uh, the goal here is a basic introduction to troubleshooting your cinder configuration. Um, I'm Kurt Martin. I've uh, been a cloud uh, engineer at HP for some time. I started working on OpenStack back in the Grizzly time frame, along with my coworker, Walt. Uh, we we basically introduced fiber channel support to OpenStack, and we've been involved with Cinder ever since the Grizzly time frame. Uh, Jay Bryant, uh, another uh, Cinder subject matter expert, he uh, works for IBM, and we put this session together as both, both of us and everybody else in the Cinder community, we get asked a lot of these same questions. As you notice, uh, both Jay and Walt are core members, so their IRC names are hidden. So it's harder to find them when we need plus twos on code at the end of the release cycles. I'm easily recognized with my IRC name of K. Martin, plus United lost my luggage, so I'll look like this all week. <laughs> so for the agenda, uh, I'd like to go over the cinder volume states that we have. There's quite a few of them. Um, you'll usually see these in the, in the log file, but most noticeably in Horizon if you're in uh, uh, what volume you're uh, your, uh, what state your volume's in. I'll briefly go over the architecture and volume flow, um, as well as the log file locations for the sender volume, uh, sender scheduler, API, and during attachments where those errors may occur over in the Nova log. So I'll go over that. Then I'll invite Jay up on stage and he'll go through the, um, some of the common errors with sender. Uh, Walt will come up and do some of the uh, attaching issues. Uh, both over with iSCSI and Fiber Channel, and then we have some useful links and we'll take Q&A. So as you see, there's quite a list of volume states that a volume can move through during its life cycle. Uh, a lot of times you'll just see air in Horizon, and what did that exactly mean? Uh, we'll give you some hints on where to, where to resolve those issues. Some other uh, things notice, uh, no notable here is Sometimes the volumes just get stuck in a particular state. It'll just spin at creating. You know, where do you look for those types of errors? Or something will, when you go to attach a volume, it will just sit in attaching state for a while and then go flip back to available. So that wasn't successful. Where do you go look for those errors? So I'm sure not everybody's a sender expert in the room, so I just kind of wanted to explain the process uh, what I've done here is uh, Nova has just as many components, if not more, inside, but I kind of wanted to blow up Cinder, show the main pieces. Uh, we have inside Cinder, we have the Cinder API, the scheduler, the volume manager, and Cinder backup. Uh, calls come in through the client, um, and they actually um, will go, uh, I'll, I'll describe like how uh, volume is created. So basically, uh, on volume creation, the sender client sends an API request over REST to the sender API. The sender API takes that request, turns it over to the scheduler where it uses and figures out its capabilities that are reported up from the back end or the storage controller, and it will decide based on configurable filters and where's where that volume would best be suited. And then it goes to sender volume and will actually create that volume on the back end storage array or LVM or a distributed file system. On Nova attach, so this is when you want to actually attach a volume to a VM, it goes through a slightly different flow. Nova will actually call sender through its API and it will pass a message to sender volume through the, through the message queue and will return some information to Nova like IQN, worldwide names, uh, host names of where it wants that storage to be connected to. Once it gets, uh, makes, senders does some information to make sure, and Nova to make sure that, that, it, that those uh, connections can be made, permissions, CHAP support, et cetera. It will actually go and um, come back to the, uh, to the, um, the connection information is returned that was passed to Nova, and Nova will actually do the connection with the, with the either for fiber channel through the HBAs or with iSCSI through the iSCSI initiator and target and make those connections. So that's the flow there in the purple of once the 
a volume is attached. And once it gets attached to the sender uh, or to the compute host, the hypervisor takes over from that point and actually does the device mapping to the VM instances. So here are some of the log, log files that are pretty important and where, where, you, where you will find some of the errors. So on the controller node, that's sender. M most cases, but it's not always required that all three of these are running on the same system, the scheduler, the uh, volume manager, and the API, but it's not required. But in this demonstration, we'll consider that it is. Um, the sender API log is very useful to determining if you have any co connectivity issues or endpoint issues. The scheduler does all the scheduling of volume creation. Oftentimes your volume won't be created and you won't see anything in the sender log. You should look in the scheduler log. Um, the sender volume log is the main sender log for all driver related uh, configurations and any type of errors there. The compute node is on the Nova side, so this happens during the attaching phase. If the attach fails, like I said earlier, it will actually go through it like it's attaching, but instead of it being in use, it'll go back to available. What happened, chances are you'll have a, an error in, in the Nova log. To enable debugging on the log in the log files, uh, simple debug equals true, that will turn on debugging. You can also turn verbose to um, true for info messages. And uh, those options are in, um, in the sender.com file. Anytime you change that, you will need to restart the sender services, unfortunately. We're working on making some of that dynamic uh, in a uh, you know, future release of, of OpenStack. Some vendors, uh, for example, the three-par uh, driver has some client information and that's another option to turn on to have some additional debugging there. Um, all this, most, all the drivers do a real good job in the configuration reference guide documenting any additional features like this. And now I'd like to invite Jay up to uh, go through some of the common errors with Cinder. Okay, thank you, Kurt. So um, what I wanna do here is, hopefully now you've got a good, decent idea, um, you know, if you weren't familiar with Cinder already, um, how, the pieces fit together and where to look in the log files. Now I'm gonna start walking through some specific log files and um, errors to give you an idea um, of what can go wrong just when you're first trying to bring Cinder up. Um, when you get beyond that driver initialization problems, okay, so my, my vendor driver hasn't started the way I expected. Uh, get you beyond that into, well, why is my volume not being created properly? And then finally, I'll pass it off to Walt and he'll talk about you know some issues with attachments. So, hopefully give you at least a flavor as we go through all the different places where you may need to do some debugging to help you get started and, and give you pointers for the future. So, and these examples um, are all very basic. Um, some of them are using LVM, um, which is what you get with DevStack by default as your, your setup. And then also some examples using um, SANS uh, with Storewise in the, in the three par. So, covering uh, you know basically all the different varieties that you may see here as much as we can in 40 minutes. So um, first, uh, I've got my, my Cinder set up and I'm trying to connect to it with my client. Now, it, and I apologize, all these examples are from the command line, but kind of the assumption is uh, in your early setup, you're gonna be primarily using the command line. You'll see some of these errors through Horizon as well, but at this point, the best place to do debug is from the command line using, you know, going into the log files on the control node. So, um, anyway, so at, at first, if you don't have Cinder, you may have installed it, but the services may not have come up. Um, when you go and try to use your Cinder client to talk to the system, you'll get an error like you, you see here um, on the, the first um, um, picture where it says that it's not able to establish a connection to Cinder. Um, that means, okay, I can't talk to the API, and you wanna go and check, you know, using etsy init.b in that directory, check our OpenStack uh, Cinder API and OpenStack Cinder scheduler and scheduler volume, are those, are those all running? That's the first place to check. Uh, you can see in the example here, I started the API service, and then I was able to do a, a basic list command and see that I hadn't created any volumes yet. So now I'm able to, to interact with um, Cinder, what happens if I, I do that list command and I get a, an error back that says that uh, it gets an HTTP 500, I can't talk to the server. 
unfortunately, this is kind of a, you know, a generic error that you will see in a number of situations, and I've gotten the question many times before. Why, why do we report this generic HTTP 500 error? Well, some of it is for security reasons. Um, some of the error messages that come back to a client, if, if we didn't keep them, um, you know, if we printed them all out, you could get usernames or information. We want the back ends to be very, very much um, hidden from the user. They shouldn't have to worry about that. That's why that information goes into the log file and we, and we spit out this kind of generic error that says, okay, something's gone wrong. Go take a look or, or talk to your, your cloud administrator to find out why, why you can't interact with the server. In this case, I went to the um, uh, var log cinder volume file and you can see that there's an error there that, that says it was unable to talk to the database. So that's another thing that often goes wrong when you're first setting up the system is you forget, you know, you've rebooted or something, you don't have all your startup services set properly and oops, the database isn't there. And Cinder's not gonna be able to go very far without with ac access to the database. So in this case, um, you wanna make sure that your database is, is initialized. Um, if you're using MySQL, you've got the OpenStack um, DB command. If you're using DB2, you use OpenStack DB2. Um, and then use init and the, the Cinder service and it'll make sure that you have a database that's created and that it's populated with everything you need to run Cinder. So that's the, the very first couple of things you need to get through. Um, also again, kind of going down the theme of do I have all the right services started here? Um, if you don't have AMQP running, uh, if you don't have either Cupid or Rabbit, depending on, on which distro you're using, um, that's also going to cause errors, and you'll see in your, your volume service that it's not able to connect to the, the, um, to the messaging service, and it will time out, and it'll keep trying ever, every so many seconds to, to communicate with that. So in that case, um, you, know, you want to make sure that your, your messaging service is running, um, and also then check your Cinder comp file to make sure that you've got um, the Cupid host name set correctly uh, for your controller node and that you have the right, um, the, the right port set. Um, that's another place that can be a little tricky depending on whether you're using SSL or not. The port that you're using may be different from the default. Um, so that can cause a, a timeout talking to the messaging service as well. Um, another, uh, another tricky piece here is when you, if you're using a, a SAN like a, a Storewise or a, a three par behind it, and if you don't have your IP addresses correctly set, there's often for people who are new to the storage area, there's confusion about the management port um, for talking to the SAN versus the iSCSI IP addresses. Um, and so they'll use the management port setting for, for everything in the uh, configuration file, or they'll get those, those flipped, and that will cause issues um, with your driver initializing. It won't be able to actually talk back um, to the the SAN because you know it's using the wrong it's using the wrong uh, the wrong port and either um, SSH isn't listening or uh, something like that. So so you want to make sure that when you're setting up your configuration that you get the right IP addresses in the iSCSI IP address as well as the SAN IP address fields. Um, and and this is one of those errors that the fact that that has failed may not be initially. Um, immediately obvious because when you go and look at the volume file, um, the volume um, log file, you'll see that the driver's not initialized and it's trying to do a, a status update and it's not working. And you have to actually scroll back up to when it was first starting to see that the first SSH command um, to try to talk to the back end has failed. So that that's a general tip for those of you who may be new to debugging OpenStack. You often have to go back further up the log file because there are probably breadcrumbs that you need to, to find before to find out the final reason why you've encountered a problem. So, okay, now we've gotten beyond, you know, we've got our services up and running. We're thinking thinking Cinder should be, be running and uh, we still can't create a volume. Okay, so in the, the example of an LVM uh, setup, the common error is I don't actually have the volume group that we're trying to use, um, either because the creation of it um, by, by, you know, the, by uh, the stack uh, setup has failed or 
um, you know, you've got, don't have enough storage, something failed along there in your, in your test setup, you want to go and make sure that, that you actually have a volume group. So in the case that you don't, um, you'll see a nice error like this that says the Cinder Volumes volume group is not available. Um, and so you want to go and make sure, okay, uh, in the case of LVM, you know, use, some, use the VGS command. Do I have any volumes, uh, volume groups defined? In this case, you can see, no, I don't. So that's, that's the source of the problem. You may also have a volume group with a different name um, created, and you need to go back and change, you know, the volume group line in etsycinder.conf uh, to, to use the right volume group name for your configuration. Um, so that's, that's a common problem that you'll run into with LVM. Uh, startup. Next, um, so if you're using a SAN instead of LVM, it's often SSH that bites you during the driver initialization process. So why, why do we need SSH? Well, because um, at least in the case of Storewise and 3PAR a little bit, they're, they're more based on REST, but in the case of the, the Storewise drivers, it needs to SSH to the, the, the driver back end to um, do the actual SVC commands to set up your volumes, create them, export them to hosts. And so if it can't do that, it's not going to go very far. So that's, that's one of the things that it does here early in the, the process is checks, can I talk to my back end? Um, if, it, if I can't, then you're going to get a failure. Um, there are a number of things that, th that can cause that failure. Uh, the first one that, that bit me most often is if you're using SSH keys, you have to make sure that those keys are accessible by the Cinder user, not the root user. Um, you know, that, so they need to be in a path that's, that's accessible by the, the Cinder username. In other words, you're going to get an error trying to read the key, um, or people forget to put the keys in the location they've specified in the config file. That's another way that, that things can potentially go wrong. Um, so check your SAN private key path and, and make sure it's pointed to the right location and that it's a file that's accessible. Um, if in the case that you're, you're using username and password, the authentication failure is nice and easy to spot. It spits out an error right there that says, hey, authentication failed. So that one's not so bad. Um, and again, this is a, a case in both cases where when you get further down the file, you're going to see this, this warning that it can't update the, the volume stats. And the heart of the failure is really further back up the file where it, um, where it had initially tried to talk to the back end and that failed. OK, so hopefully that's gotten you beyond you know, common pitfalls in getting your driver initialized. And now we can, can try to create a volume, um, which is where we all eventually want to get to. Um, so here is the, the, um, the, the kind of things that can go wrong when you're trying to create your volume and you end up with that, that irritating error message um, that it's like, okay, what's that mean? Most of the time you're going to go, and it's this case, you're going to see the failure in the scheduler file. Um, it's going to give you this generic, I can't find a host. What does that mean? Well, it means you've made a request and it's gone out and it's searched the avail available volume services and said, hey, where can I make a volume like this? And they've all said, nope, I don't, I don't have enough space for that. Or, um, you know, in the case of my example here, um, my Cinder volume service isn't started. Um, so I go and I use the Cinder manage command uh, along with service list, and it shows, okay, my scheduler is running. I got a nice happy face, but I've got that irritating triple X next to my, my Cinder volume service. So when the scheduler went and said, who can make me a volume? Nobody responded. And you end up with your volume in error state. Um, so that's that's the first thing to check, and if you know if you don't have a volume service running, you know go back and make sure. Do you have does is the is Cupid running properly? Is the volume service able to talk back to the control node? Is it started? You know do the debug there again. Um, is there enough free space? Uh, obviously, okay. Your volume service may be running, but you may not have enough space. Um, and so in the the case I show here, I've got a 10 gig uh, volume group. And I've already used up eight of it, and I tried to make another eight, and that fails. Um, in the case that, that you do that, I think I show here, yeah. Um, if there's not enough free space, at least there we give you a little bit better hint that says, you know, if there's two gig available and you wanted eight, I can't help you. Now, one trick here is when you're using LVM, remember that it needs some additional space for, like, metadata. So if I tried to create a two gig volume, that wouldn't work as well. You know, I could create a one gig one. But 
but at two gig, I, you know, you need some of that extra buffer space in there. So you'll see the error message sometimes and think, well, that's not right, but have to remember that you're dealing with, with some d space for metadata in there too. Um, Oh, this was an, another good one that, that Walt ran into while creating the presentation. You have to make sure that if you're using volume types, which I'm sure a lot of you will be or, or have started using volume types, um, you have to make sure that your backend name that you're using, if you've got uh, multiple backends uh, uh, specified, you have to use the same name in your volume type as is put in the Cinder uh, configuration file. In other words, it will also throw the no host uh, found error. So that's another good one is, you know, uh, make sure that you've got your volume type set up properly uh, in and are um, in uh, lined up with what you have set in the Cinder comp file. Um, oh, a couple of ones I ran into actually while creating the presentation. Um, are you know you can end up in with cases where um, the the volume is stuck in the creating state and it's like well wh what's going on here well I'd forgotten I'd stopped my scheduler service to do something else and went and tried to do this and it's like well it's LVM this shouldn't be you know it's on the on the control node this should not be taking two minutes and I go and I use Cinder manage service list and I saw oh my scheduler is not running so that's one case where you may may see that, you know, it looks like things are stuck. And so I went and I started it and it was okay and then magically my, my volume was available. Um, so that's where you can see it's stuck in creating. Um, also, it, it's interesting if your volume service, if somebody pulls it out from under you while you're creating your, your volume, you can get in a state where it sticks in the creating state as well. Um, so those are a couple of little gotchas you want to watch out for uh, in the case that, that you think your volume should have created nice and quickly and it's not showing up. So go check those two things. So um, hopefully that's gotten you through being able to, to you know, get, get your volumes created. And once you've created them, you want to actually use them, which means you have to attach them. And I'll turn it over to Walt to talk about that. All right, thanks, Jay. Thought you goodbye here. Thank you, sir. All right, so Kurt and Jay actually talked a little bit about um, problems that you have when you're standing Cinder up and or when you're configuring Cinder and making sure that those actually, that Cinder comes up properly and that you have Cinder configured. So there are different problems that can arise when you try and do a volume attachment and those actually could be related to uh, Cinder.conf changes uh, that need to be made and or problems that actually happen on the Nova side because there's uh, tools in the tool chain that may not exist that, uh, uh, that are required. Um, so one of the things here, the first thing I'll talk a little bit about is um, when you try and attach uh, an iSCSI volume using the LVM driver, um, one of the common things is to ensure that the iSCSI IP address is actually set correctly. Um, because if you don't, um, you won't know when you start Cinder up, right? Because what actually happens when you try and attach that volume happens, um, uh, the code path that actually gets called only happens at attach time, which is um, what it tries to do is it creates an iSCSI session between the uh, compute host and whoever's serving up the volume, right? So in this case, Cinder won't complain because um, the IP address is actually not accessed until you actually attach the volume. So. Um, the error that we show here is um, there's no session found, and that's basically what happens when you have an incorrect iSCSI IP address. So it's an easy one to resolve. You basically confirm that that's the actual IP address, make sure it's pingable, make sure it's on the network, um, and then go back and re-edit cinder.conf and, uh, and bounce cinder. Um, all right, so... Now we're talking a little bit about fiber channel. And fiber channel is a little bit more tricky because um, of some of the things that are required on the Nova compute side. Um, so there's a couple things that you need. Obviously is that um, uh, the coordination between Nova and Cinder um, is what drives this whole process, right? So some errors might happen uh, that might originate in the Nova log. Some errors might happen and originate in the Cinder side of things. Um, so one of the things that is required actually to have to, to exist on the Nova side is, is a couple utilities that need to be there because Nova 
has no concept of, of what fiber channel is, right, for the most part. It just uses, we just use utilities that exist within the system to actually discover such things as the fiber channel HBAs. And the HBAs need to be there to actually make the connection to the other side um, where the array actually exists. So um, Nova actually uses uh, the SysFS utils utility called uh, SysTool to actually discover what the uh, HBAs are to find out what the worldwide names are, worldwide port names. Okay, I guess we're okay. Um, <laughs> and so the problem with this is that um, when you stand Nova up, you won't see any of these errors, right? You'll only see this when you try and do the volume attachment. And that's why this one is a little bit tricky, is because the error happens um, deep embedded with all the noise that happens within the Nova log, within the cinder log, and it, this one is really kind of hard to track down. Um, and, and you can see, uh, where is it here? Um, on this line here, right here, is that SysTool is not installed, right? So that one is kind of hard to track down, but you have to install that as well as um, another package, which I'll talk about here a little bit later. Uh, but for Red Hat systems, you use it's called SysFS Utils. Install with yum, Ubuntu. You install it with apt get. Um, so that's that's one of them. The other is obviously you need to have a fiber channel dr kernel driver there on the Nova compute side in order to actually even see the HBAs at all. Um, and for the Amulux uh, cards, which is what we use in, in our lab, um, the actual kernel module is called LPFC. And, and that is included in the Ubuntu Linux image extra, and then uh, the version of the kernel that you're using generic package. That doesn't come installed with the stock uh, kernel. So this one bites us occasionally with some other uh, uh, of our engineers that we actually are um, training. They'll go, well, I don't have any HBA cards, or wh where's the driver? Where do I get it? So that's that's one of the package, uh, one of the kernel modules that you have to have. Um, and so the one of the other support packages that need to be there in order for Fiber Channel to work is the SG3 utils. We actually use um, SG scan utility to find out some information about the block device, um, which is used at detach time. Um, and that error will also show up only in the Nova log when you're trying to do a volume attach. It, you won't see that in Cinder, except in the fact that um, the attachment actually failed. Okay, so this shows a little bit of an uh, example output of what you should see uh, if you manually run the sys tool. Um, we basically show a little bit of an output here to show uh, that um, the not only is sys tool installed, but also that the uh, one of the HBA ports is actually online. The last line here is what's the important piece here, uh, because this, if it's not online, then you're not going to be able to do any attachments to it, right? Um, so this usually means that uh, it's not wired up, or it's not enabled. Different hardware, uh, different manufacturers have different uh, requirements for making that online. But for ours, it needs to actually be plugged in and wired up for it to actually be online. Um, and so if it's offline, it doesn't really matter if you have SysTool installed. It, you, you can't do attachments to it. So, um, all right. So things get uh, even more complicated. Uh, if, if you're familiar with Fiber Channel, um, most people don't have them directly connected up. You need to have a zone manager or a switch in between there, right, to, to create your fabric. And so um, Cinder, uh, as of uh, Icehouse, has a new capability called the Fiber Channel Zone Manager, uh, which actually creates zones for you on the fly, so you don't, as an administrator, have to pre-zone everything up because that's completely impractical, right? So. We, we try and do our best uh, to uh, automate the zoning at attachment time. So some of this is, uh, we show the first block up here, we show um, the uh, part of um, the fiber channel zone manager config, which is in cinder.conf. Um, and you can see uh, for the switch that we have, uh, uh, we're talking to here is a brocade switch. And you can see the address uh, and the user credentials. So. Obviously, you need to make sure that the credentials are correct. You can actually talk to the switch. And uh, the problem that we have today is that when you stand Cinder up, it starts up. We don't actually go and verify that the switch is actually there yet. So you only see this error at volume attachment time. One of the things that I'm looking at fixing for, uh, for the next release is actually doing some validation in Cinder that when it starts up, you can actually make sure that it can talk to the switch. So trying to debug those problems won't happen only at attach time. Um, which is kind of a pain. 
Um, so we show an error here um, at the bottom of, of a configuration problem that we have um, when they uh, misconfigured uh, the zone manager uh, with incorrect credentials. Um, and that's in the cinder log. Okay, so that doesn't cover all of the problems that you might see with um, attachments, but it covers uh, a good majority of some of the simpler cases that are actually pretty hard to debug and, and track down, but it gives you kind of a, an overview of, of some of the issues that you might uh, see. Um, so here we provide um, a couple useful links here. Um, the Cloud Administrator Guide and the uh, Configuration Reference Guide gives you good information on how to actually uh, configure Cinder and some of the drivers that are involved here, as well as the Zone Manager configuration because they're, they're non-trivial things, and each uh, driver has is their own specific configuration items that you need to get right. Um, and uh, if all else fails and you're still having problems, we provide a launchpad uh, link here for uh, so you can file a uh, bug. So um, all of the Cinder team here usually uh, sits in the OpenStack Cinder channel on Freenode. So if you have any questions, um, now's a good time to ask them, or you can get a hold of us on IRC. I guess that covers it for us. Yeah, go ahead. Come up to the mic, please. Hello. Uh, I have a question. We are using IBM Storewise as a Cinder plugin. And have you tested uh, live migration at Fiber Channel when you boot from a volume instance? Because we tested and we have several issues, but not only with Storewise, but uh, with Cinder in general, when you want to do live migration vo on volume back instance. So I personally haven't tested live migration with Storewise because I, I work at HP and we work on 3PAR. But um, we have done a lot of testing and a lot of work on live migration recently, especially um, in the Juno and, and the trailing end of Icehouse uh, time frame. And there, there were a lot of problems with it. Um, a lot of drivers in Cinder were under the assumption that you can only have a volume attached to one host at any one given time. And that's actually kind of sort of not true. Um, but most driver writers actually write their code under that assumption, and we actually had a bug that we had to fix um, at the end of Icehouse. So, and and one of the problems with live migration and has been for a while is that it's n actually not in the gate yet. Um, I don't know if they're actually fixing that for Kilo or if it ended up in Juno. I'm I'm really not sure. But um, if we get it in the gate, then we'll see a lot of these problems actually exposed early on in the system. That way, we can actually. A, a, a as vendors, um, we're writing drivers, we can actually uh, attack some of those problems and fix them up front. Um, in terms of store-wise specifically, I'll hand that over to you. Yeah, so um, that's a, a good question, and if, if you don't yet have bugs out there, um, please get them out there and get a hold of me, and I can, can work with you to get those. We've got a team in uh, CSTL that's dedicated to store-wise, and I know they'd be, be happy to work with you to, to get those resolved, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure. Any more? All right, great. So I have also a question. If it's possible to map one volume to multiple instances. <laughs> 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 That's a great question. <laughs> I actually started working on uh, multi-attach, which is basically what this is, um, uh, a couple releases ago. And it got stuck in, in, uh, in reviews in Nova. And um, it's still on my plate to do, um, and it's something that we're actually looking at uh, trying to implement, um, uh, but I don't have it done just yet. Uh, there are uh, a couple patches up there for work in progress. That's it requires some pretty extensive changes, actually, within Cinder, the API, the Cinder client, as well as uh, Nova to support this. So it's, it's a non-trivial thing to do, and as anyone knows, getting reviews through Nova is, is difficult, um, even as a core member. So... Um, we, we want to do the job right and make sure we're not going to break Nova, uh, especially uh, with doing volume attaches because that's pretty much a lot of, <laughs> that's pretty much everything, you know, um, with respect to Cinder. So we're, we, we need to be careful there. Um, but it's it's a work in progress right now, and we're, we're going to try and get it done as soon as we can. So so you think it, it will be in, in Kilo release? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't quote me on it, though.
Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, you said like um, uh, you're working on a, a, a way to you know figure out uh, the uh, problems uh, well before in time. I mean the NOAA attached problems, uh, but the NOAA attached would happen from the NOAA side, right? So yeah. are you gonna uh, like uh, what's the plan? Like, are you gonna check with NOAA during cinder restart? Like, are we able to see this IP or like uh, how is it? So so there's a lot of problems there, right? Is is that Right now, there's no there's no concept between the coordination and Nova and Cinder to actually do some checks up front, right? So w one of the things that I'm I'm looking at doing for Cinder um, is because I, we can control that code. Is that um, in terms of fiber channel is trying to do some basic validation at stand up time for Cinder, um, because tracking down problems um, at attached time is is kind of a painful thing to do, right? So. But one of the things that I would like to see happen on the Nova side is when Nova stands up to actually get a count of um, some of the requirements that are actually needed to be there for in terms of fiber channel, right? But in terms of actually ensuring that iSCSI IP addresses are there and pingable, you know, that that's kind of up to the administrator at that point. Nova can't know all of the 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 endpoints of all of the back ends that Cinder has and, and ensure that it can ping all of them. You know, that that's a little bit more difficult of a problem and, and kind of out of the scope of, of Nova. Um, I would say that I if you have Cinder cr configured correctly and, uh, and as a driver writer, I do actually do a lot of um, validations in our driver code at stand-up time when it starts up to ensure that, hey, yeah, I can talk to our array in the back end and it's actually there and and uh, and do some validations there. And if we fail, then, then, then that driver instance gets put into an uninitialized state and you can't provision against it. Um, and you should see that immediately on the logs and be able to, to try and track those downs with looking at some of the error messages that you get in the center log. So um, I don't know if that really covers everything that you asked, but. Yeah, but the NOVA and the Cinder, uh, you know, the NOVA compute and Cinder could be on a different systems, right? So it's possible that right. because of some networking issues on the NOVA side, uh, you know, the attached could not work, you know, so. Right. So, if, uh, I mean, ideally, I'm, I'm this is just, you know, I'm just uh, thinking aloud. Ideally, there should be a way for Cinder to tell NOVA that this is what I'm using and, you know, can you just verify whether you are able to ping it or something like that, you know, why can't we do like that? Yeah, that, that API doesn't exist today. Um, and right now, the only way to track that down is that attached time, right, is that NOVA needs to be able to see that array in the back end, and if it's not there, it's not there right now. There's there's no way to or maybe Nova to to pre-call and say, hey, you know what, Cinder, what are all your back ends so I can ping them to find them? That doesn't exist today. Or maybe uh, before doing a Cinder attach, you know, maybe split the attach into two operations. First is a pre-check operation and then a real attach kind of thing. I'm not sure what the value to that is because it's going to fail either way, right? Yeah, so but then it will not take the whole, um, you know, as you said, the libvirt and the QMU log will not come. The pre-check itself will fail and this IP you know, Cinder wants you to connect to this IP, but then the pre-check itself is failing, then the pre-check will just do a ping or something from the NOVA, so, you know, we'll not have that baggage of the error, right? I'm just assuming. You still need to get notified other way, right? So. Yeah, it's like you just said, you could ask NOVA, hey, we have a different way of doing this, and ask the attempt to get the same thing where you just said, you know, NOVA, this is what we're doing. Right, so okay, yeah. Time. If for doing iSCSI, yeah, I guess we could add that to to the libvirt volume driver for iSCSI attaches to, to ping it prior to actually doing an iSCSI admin uh, login. But at the end of the day, it's going to be an error that happens at the same point in time uh, in terms of the log. So the value of that, I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Hi. Sure, go ahead. We have one more question, short, Hi. if we can. Uh, admitting you are in an error state, for whatever reason at a creating time of the volume, um, you find the root cause and you fix it, but you have uh, to fix the database, the SQL database, to because the quota has been affected, the uh, reservation has been affected. Is there any way in a, in a flow or current work to avoid this reservation? To avoid the reservation itself? Um, I'm not sure about that. Or, or um, reverting them? Well, what, what you can do today is if, if you get a volume stuck in the creating state um, due to whatever reason, you can actually reset the state of the volume yeah. if you want using the, the command line uh, utils. Um, so that, that is one mechanism. Yeah. Now, in terms of fixing the, the quotas and the reservation, I'm, I'm not as familiar with that, uh, uh, that piece of sender. Uh, personally, but Jay, do you have any? 
I, I'm not sure that it actually does get reserved. If if it's stuck in creating, it still it is reserved. But if it gets put in an error state, I, I don't know if that actually gets left in or not. Yeah, it yeah, it should be reverted. Should be. Yeah. When if it if it's not when you're deleting the volume, oh, well in error state, it in an error state, okay. yeah, yeah, the quota in the reservation. Yeah, that should should be reverted, and if not, something we should look at. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, we're always on the uh, IRC channel, OpenStack Cinder. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you for coming.